afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Tuesday, April 24th, 2018, episode 56. You give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines for the self-reliant. And you can get show notes at iState.tv slash H056, which is linked in the video description. Today's show is entitled, as you can see, This Monkey's Gone to Court and Losing His IP. And some of you may have gotten the rather oblique reference that I dropped there to the Pixie song, This Monkey's Gone to Heaven. I thought about using that song, but I thought my IPs might, uh, might, might hurt me on that one. So on this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed with Paul Gordon, Monkey business, no more. The WikiLeaks strikes back. Power from light unseen. Sharks and bears, oh my. And more. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. No, monkeys can't sue you over monkey selfies, says U.S. Appeals Court. And I, I made this the uh, top story today, not necessarily because it's the most important story. It's, it's kind of important. It's kind of lulzy, but it's not your lulls of the day. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I thought start off with something fun today, even if it's not your lulls of the day. So Peter decided to bring a lawsuit against David Slater, who's a nature photographer, and he happened to use a selfie of a macaque monkey, and that monkey's name is Naruto. By the way, Naruto is not pictured in this uh, image. This is just a, a generic uh, image of a macaque monkey. I, I'm willing to bet if I actually use the selfie that David Slater would say, Ma peace, ironically enough. So the photo was taken by Naruto back in 2011 when Slater left his camera unattended in Sluizi, Indonesia. And Slater then used the photo, which prompted PETA to rush in to bring a lawsuit on behalf of Naruto. On behalf. I put that in air quotes. The lawyers for PETA, Jeffrey Kerr, said of the lawsuit back in 27, when science and technology advance, the law adapts. There is nothing in the Copyright Act limiting ownership based on species. And PETA is asking for an interpretation of the act that acknowledges today's scientific consensus that macaque monkeys can create an original work. Okay. <laughs> the lawsuit was, I, I mean, <laughs> I saw Joe versus the volcano recently and uh, the, the one character in there, the, the, there's three, three, three ver versions of uh, Meg Ryan. And the, th the second version, oh, she's kind of snooty and snippety and uh, talks like this. And uh, Joe gives her this really deep passage about his life or something. And she just looks at him and she says, I have nothing to say to that. That's my response here to that quote. I, I have nothing to say to that. The lawsuit was brought in 2015 with PETA attempting to force any monies gained from the photo to go to benefit the monkey. PETA, of course, uh, they'd be the one to administer the funds, and they would also be the ones to determine what's best for Naruto. Unless, of course, he learns how to, to, to text them or something. I don't know how he can communicate his feelings other than by throwing poop at them. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a species though. Come on, macaques have rights too. So the lawsuit has been trudging along for quite some time until it's just recently been given a ruling by the Ninth Circuit U.S. Appeals Court. Now I gotta say, if the Ninth Circuit U.S. Appeals Court, which is probably the most steady leftist of all uh, appeals courts, votes against you in a ruling that kind of advances, uh, I don't know, is it? Is, 
I'll say Stady leftists are much more likely to embrace this kind of thing than Stady right is. So I'll, I'll, I'll put it at that. So you're you're kind of in their camp, and and they voted against you. You you, you might not have a case. So the court ruled that the lawsuit would not go forward as lawsuits cannot be filed in the name of claiming that a monkey had some sort of copyright claim over anything. As a matter of fact, they further elaborated that animals cannot hold a copyright for anything. Now, I don't need to get into that whole philosophical whatever argument of uh, animals having property or uh, IP rights or copyrights or any kind of stuff like that because, yeah, I don't favor IPs or copyrights to begin with. As a matter of fact, someone needs to tell these judges that, that humans are actually animals too. So, therefore, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to interpret this ruling that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals just shot down IPs for everyone because we're all animals and they've established that animals can't have IP and copyright. So, so hey, that's it. The death of IP. Yay! It's probably not going to work out like that. But, you know, like the idiot sovereign citizens. I'm, not that they're all idiots, but 90% of them are. Uh, the idiot sovereign citizens who believe that my magic parchment loopholes can somehow protect them from the intention of those who wish to do harm to them using my laws. Yeah, I'd probably suffer the same fate if I were to try that. Dem lawsuit against WikiLeaks invites countersuit that could lead to compromising discovery. This is almost the top story, and, and, and by rights, it probably should have been. I just wanted to start off with a monkey, and I wanted a monkey in the title. That's why the monkey was the top story. When the Democratic National Committee, that's the DNC to you and me, announced that it was suing the Trump campaign, uh, along with WikiLeaks for allegedly conspiring to interfere with its primary elections. I'm I'm be honest with you, that's not really something that, that concerns me much on iState.tv. But I mean, you may see a link to this story from an outside source on wire watch.news, because I do offer some links to stories like this there. For just just to just to keep a track of of what 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 the normies are talking about, but but you wouldn't see it on iState TV. However, when WikiLeaks decided to join in the fray and countersued the DNC, well, I I suddenly became very interested in this process. And by the way, this also breaks another not hard and fast rule, but a but a, but a general rule, which is I don't generally cover. Uh, stories that are being covered everywhere else, and this is certainly being covered everywhere else, but I felt like I'm going to break that rule too. So uh, I, I, I didn't and still don't believe that the lawsuit will go anywhere, but now that WikiLeaks has decided to countersue, as, as they themselves point out when they said that a countersuit would be fun, fun, that's what they use, that's their word, because of the opportunity for discovery, well... This this lawsuit suddenly uh, suddenly got very interesting to me, very interesting indeed. And and the Trump campaign, yeah, they're countersuing too, but I don't really care about the Trump campaign and their countersuit. I I have a feeling that the WikiLeaks lawyers know a little bit more about what's behind those closed doors. So I have a feeling that the WikiLeaks lawyers are going to have a better sense of what to go after in discovery and even what might be discovered in discovery. So the DNC could very well be hoisted on its own petard because they chose to go after an independent investigative news outlet, uh, whatever you want to call WikiLeaks. And uh, that's why the story interests me. And and it's our action story of the day because this is an independent news outlet that didn't take this lightly. And I have a feeling that they got a lot of ammunition. And I like their chances here. I like their chances in making the DNC and, and possibly if Hillary is behind the scenes, which uh, allegedly she is, possibly seeing Hillary Clinton eat crow once again. I'm all for it. Oops.
drawing solar power from light that is unseen thanks to nanoparticle. By the way, that oops was because I didn't click on the next story because I'm an idiot. I instead I locked out that story. I don't want to do that. So drawing solar power from light that is unseen thanks to nanoparticle. Here is your moment of happy here. Moment of happy. I don't know if I have a regular moment of happy. I don't know if I will. But let's say this is your moment of happy. Scientists from around the world working under the auspices of the U.S. Department of Energy's boo, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, also known as Berkeley Lab, or is it just a part of Berkeley Lab? Whatever. Have released a study that shows how nanoparticles can be used to enable solar panels to derive energy from light that was previously not accessible by solar cell technology. And this is from EurekaAlert.org. By the way, I really like that site, uh, EurekaAlert.org. I, I strongly recommend it. Uh, nanoparticle breakthrough could capture unseen light for solar energy conversion. An international team of scientists has demonstrated a breakthrough in the design and function of nanoparticles that could make solar panels more efficient by converting light usually missed by solar cells into usable energy. The team, led by scientists at the U.S. Department of Energy's Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Berkeley Lab, demonstrated how coating tiny particles with organic dyes greatly enhances their ability to capture near-infrared light and to remit the light in the visible light spectrum, which could also be useful for biological imaging. And I'm, I'm, I don't even understand the biological imaging part, but I do understand the, uh, the solar part. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is... Your daily lulls. You go camping and you, you look forward to harmonizing with nature and just, just getting away from all the stresses of the modern world. You turn your cell phone off and you settle into a season of peace and quiet. But something happens on the way to that peace and that meditation. A big old 300-pound black bear decides that your harmony with nature will now include a harmonic smash to the face. A metaphorical harmonic smash to the face, which could become literal. And it ended up being more like a uh, claw swipe. I'm not sure if this person was claw swipe, but I do know that they did get a good old-fashioned skull bite followed by being dragged on the ground with your skull locked in the jaws of a bear. You know, harmony with nature. I mean, I don't care how you slice it. You gotta, if you survive it, which this person did, you, you gotta get up from that and you gotta say, not cool, man, not cool. But you survive this harmonic encounter with nature after a few stitches and a few why me sessions with yourself and whatever gets you through the dark days. And you finally get over it. You finally escape the doom and the gloom feeling of being a not-so-lucky feller. You finally bench venture back into the world about a year later. This time, screw the land. <laughs> land animals, well, they suck. <laughs> And you can speak with authority about how and why land animals suck. You still literally have the scars. No, 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 no. This time, this time, you're going to go out into the water. So you turn the cell phone off and you settle into the peace and quiet and harmony with uh, nature, yeah. You let that whole vibe take over your whole body. Well, there happens to be a shark about that, uh, you know, has a different understanding of harmony with nature. A very different understanding. And it does not align with your understanding of harmony with nature. His idea of a harmony with nature is to go ahead and bite you. So he does. Right in your leg, you get bit on the leg by a six to eight foot tiger shark. You get the feeling that your leg's been ripped off. 
You get to see the blood shoot out of the of the deep gash, and you barely make it to the emergency room where you're just stitched up. Now possessing shark scars to go along with your bear scars. And that happened. And it happened in less than one year to 20-year-old Dylan McWilliams. Wow. I don't know if you get a prize for that, buddy, but you get a prize for that. You get to be written about across the webosphere. So congratulations on that. And Dylan McWilliams is from Grand Junction, Colorado. And the first incident happened nearly a year ago, back in July of 2017. In that incident, McWilliams was camping in Boulder County, Colorado, minding his own business when he was attacked. And less than a year later, this just this past week, McWilliams, he was boogie boarding at uh, Kauai, Kauai, Hawaii, when the target shark, tiger shark mentioned above decided to attack him. And, and at this point, perhaps McWilliams should either wear armor when he goes out into nature's backyard or back pool, whatever the case may be. Or maybe he should just stay in his house and for the love of everything that's decent, stay the heck away from animals. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. This is your Daily Dookie. Welcome to your Daily Dookie. Here it is, your Daily Dookie. Facebook lawsuit challenges its status at not being a publisher. Yeah, and this uh, this picture here that you see, if you're watching the video, is of a of a gentleman named Martin Lewis, who's uh he's a consumer consumer rights advocate. He's he's very well known. So, an intriguing lawsuit coming out of the UK could be a game changer, not just for Facebook. But for social media, pla media platforms in general, the lawsuit is being launched by Martin Lewis, who is suing Facebook for allowing deceptive ads on its platform that claim Lewis endorsed products he did not endorse. Now, now that part definitely is not cool. Whoever created those ads, that's not cool. There, there, there's your liability, dude, by the way. Lewis is a consumer rights advocate. And thus, any perception that he would be a paid endorser of products would be damaging to his reputation. So go after the people who created the ads. Lewis is alleging that, despite their claims, Facebook is a publisher, not simply a platform for people to publish their work on. And if the suit is successful, this would set a precedent around the world that could pay. But, I mean, I'll put it to you this way. This, if you think that Facebook and other social media is controlling now, and perhaps they have some political agenda behind it, and uh, whatever the case might be, if if a lawsuit like this were to actually win, it would have the proverbial chilling effect on social media, which would be bad for everyone because it would be much more difficult to share your content, to share your information with a wider audience. So this guy, this guy's not doing consumers any favors whatsoever. He is actually working in the interest of folks that would uh, very much like to see the transfer of information be heavily monitored, bogged down, and restricted. And that is why I am making this your daily dookie. And this guy, you, Mr. Lewis, you get the Daily Dookie Award. Not everyone, not all stories will have an individual that warrants getting a Daily Dookie Award, but you, sir, you get the Daily Dookie Award. Congratulations. For under $500, you can now have a full-color palette desktop. MSD or M3D has announced the creation of a full color palette desktop 3 printer, 3D printer that has a unique feature its price the printer is the first of its kind that has ever been sold for under five hundred dollars the technology has come a long way for anyone tracking 3d printing it's come a long way just recently uh, and it's come so far that advanced features like full color 3d printing can be offered at a fraction of the cost of what they were just a couple of years ago 
An open letter appeal to defend Rahava from the Turk Reich. I strongly uh, go, go to the notes here. So a number of folks, uh, some Rahavans and some other supporters, and uh, uh, basically have written an open letter appealing to others to come to the aid of Rahavans who are under assault from the Turk Reich. And among the signatories, I don't know who this person is, but her last name is Bookchin. And uh, I, I don't know if she's related to uh, Murray Bookchin or not, but I'm willing to bet she is because of what, if you know anything about Rahava, Bookchin has had a decided influence over that region. You should really check out Rahava if you don't know much about it. If you follow iState.tv, you get stories about Rahava with regularity because we're following this this grand experiment in stateless, statelessness surrounded by hyperstatists. Batteries not included because they're no longer needed for these toys. No batteries? No problem. How would you like to have electronic toys that don't need batteries? Batteries. These toys are powered by friction. They're called Tang Toys, and they're becoming a thing. So they're actually run with the power of friction, so they don't need, they don't need electricity. So uh, let's get to the, the, the penultimate story. Yes, this is the penultimate story. New wonder concrete created with the help of graphene. Thanks to graphene, experts in Ex Exeter, England, through Exeter University, are working on a new type of concrete that is bigger, stronger, faster, lighter, cheaper, and more environmentally friendly than current concrete. And our last story, real quick, documenting all the DNA of all life on planet Earth. A project being run in part by the Earth Biogene Project aims at documenting and, and sequencing all of DNA of all complex life on planet Earth. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. And there you have it. Now, I did actually, <laughs> yesterday, I did create the uh, the the video that had the, the sound on it, and I loaded it up. But you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn the sound on for it. So tomorrow you'll hear the beep, beep, beep at the end. I promise you, for you people who just tune in for the beep at the end, the beep will return tomorrow. I promise you. Other than that, that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for April 24th. 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or you could go to iState.tv slash H056, and as usual, you could find our podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState or headlines you may have missed. Our audio version of the show contains just the brief introduction and then just the 20 actual minutes of headlines you may have missed this part that you're hearing right now is not included in the audio version and if you're watching on youtube you missed the opening of the show and you'll also miss the very end where i respond to comments just uh friend me on facebook at facebook.com slash viz that's viz with a v as in victor don't forget to join me tonight on is daily's lozilla mystery theater with Bodhi Agora at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And that page is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is titled, It's a Republic, If Your Blockchain Can Hold It. And we'll be joined by John Donnie Gebert to talk about his idea to use a blockchain to create a direct republic of sorts. And as always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news until tomorrow at uh, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or thereabouts. Sometimes I start early like today. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.